And, of course, my guest again this weekend is Yogani. And uh, and today we're going to, uh, to take a foray into, not the living room, although some people enjoy the living room for this particular activity, but more into the bedroom um, and the spiritual side of lovemaking and uh, the world of Tantra. And, uh, and it's, a, it's a subject that we need to touch upon with kid gloves, but at the same time, not be afraid. We are all grown-ups here, and uh, this is not going to be uh, for the purposes of titillation. It's for the purposes of education and uh, and continuing continuing along a spiritual path. How long, um, in your experiences, Yogani, before you made the connection between uh, the uh, the deep meditation, the pranayama, and that there was something sexual going on here? Well, in my case, uh, having been meditating throughout the 70s, it was probably about 10 years uh, before I actually uh, started to make a, a connection with direct experience. Although before that, well before that, and perhaps right from the beginning, uh, it was, well, where does sexuality fit into this? Um, and I had had some, you know, pleasurable waves and whatnot, as many people do when they learn meditation. Uh, and when you learn uh, pranayama, those things tend to be enhanced. But it was really probably about 10 years before I made a very serious study of the subject of tantric sexual techniques. And, uh, and at the same time, I learned a lot of other techniques, which we, we can be talking about next week in the area of mudras and bandhas and postures, which are related. But... Uh, so, but I don't think nowadays it's necessary for people to be meditating 10 years before they begin to look at this subject because there's so much more understanding now about it. And um, quite frankly, in the early days, uh, the 70s and the 80s, uh, things got a little bit off on tangents with teachers like Rajneesh, who is now uh, gone, but uh, and his name was changed to Osho. Things got a little wild and crazy, and it made the headlines, and people got thrown out of the country, and <laughs> weird things were going on. But it was really a period of exploration and a very valuable period, and I was a little bit a part of that uh, and learned what the basic principles are. And the basic principles are very, very simple. But before we get into that, <laughs> let's let me just say that Tantra – is a vast and ancient system of spiritual practices that covers virtually everything that's in yoga and a whole lot more. And this is something that's little known. The, the word Tantra means wholeness or fullness, and it's so ancient it goes back, you know, 5,000 years. And you can read in scriptures a lot of the same things you find in, in yoga today were documented in tantric scriptures four or five thousand years ago. And so it's, it's a very broad system. And it's not just from India. I mean, it's it's in the Buddhist tradition. It's in the Himalayas. It's in the Tibetans. Um, that's right. Kind of that's a, kind right. Of cross, uh, it's culture. a very it's a very ancient system. Uh, so that's the first point. Uh, the second point I want to make is that when we think of tantra in the broadest sense. Uh, in terms of all of our spiritual practices, it's a system that's compatible with uh, with ordinary life. In other words, it's not a system that wants you to renounce life. It's a system that basically says, do these practices, meditation, uh, pranayama, postures, uh, and other techniques, and go out and live your life normally. This is really where that approach comes from. And I thought it was important to mention that before we kind of go off into the sexual side of it. Uh, if we're meditating and we're going out and we're active in the world, um, this is actually tantric practice because we're we're accepting the world for what it is and we're engaging in it. Got it. Yogani is my guest tonight. If you'd like to join us for this discussion, you're more than welcome to. We have to take a quick break, but our telephone numbers are 877-345-3779. That's 84, excuse me, 877-345-3779. If you've got a question for Yogani, if you'd like to chime in, we'd love to have you here. Be back in just a moment. This is 1360thesource.com. Well, hi there, Scott Fitzgerald. In for the vacationing, uh, Wilbur Shears, who's in uh, India right now. 
uh, meeting with some folks, learning some things. So in the meanwhile, Yogani and I are holding down the fort, and uh, we've covered several different topics over the past couple of weeks. Uh, deep meditation last week was spinal pranayama, or pranayama, which is uh, spinal breathing. And uh, touched upon that briefly, and now we're moving on to the world of Tantra. And, uh, Yogani, what, in your opinion, is the best way um, to approach the beginning of the discussion of Tantra? And if I had to guess, you'd say, you know what, if you check out advancedyogapractices.com and the beginning discussions under Tantra, that would pretty much explain it. But for those who haven't uh, checked out the website yet, uh, how do we begin? Yeah, there are free lessons on the website, uh, Scott, and uh, there's a, one category of lessons are the Tantra lessons, and it, it picks, picks up in a very preliminary, uh, easy way and, and brings you into the principles and practices. There's also a little red book that, uh, that came out uh, last year called Tantra, Discovering the Power of Pre-Orgasmic Sex, which is a little bit of a clue of the principle that we're going to be talking about here in a minute. Um, it really boils down to something very, very simple, and uh, Tantra, as I mentioned earlier, kind of went off in a lot of directions during the discovery stages back in the 70s and 80s, at least here in the West, in the United States it did, uh, but it, it, it's really not about that. It's not about uh, sexual lifestyles, it's not about rituals, it's not about uh, finding the perfect uh, partner. Uh, it's 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 really not about those things. What tantric sex is about is about the preservation and cultivation of sexual energy. Uh, it's a it sounds like a very mundane thing, but obviously it's not mundane when you uh, overlap whatever your sexual lifestyle happens to be. And when I uh, first mentioned this topic last week, I said what we're talking about here with Tantra is overlaying something with your normal lifestyle, whatever it is, and whether you're a heterosexual or a bisexual or a homosexual or a celibate even. It's the same principle that's involved, the preservation and cultivation of sexual energy. And there is a word, a, a Sanskrit word called brahmacharya, which is normally interpreted to mean celibacy, but that's really not what it means. What it means is literally walking in the creative power of God. Uh, Brahma means God, creative power of God, and Charya means to walk with. So Brahmacharya means more than celibacy. It certainly means preservation of sexual energy, but not in a, an enforced sort of dictatorial kind of way, right. uh, it also means cultivation, to walk with, to be involved with, to, to actually to nurture. So, so that's what we're talking about in Tantra. That is the basic principle. And all of the practices and techniques that are related to that, including many techniques in yoga that wouldn't be considered sexual necessarily, uh, all of those have to do with that principle. So that's that's sort of where we're starting. Every, and, yeah, they all seem to, to kind of tie together. They're all threads that are part of the same rug, so to speak. Absolutely. Um, although one of the things that you mentioned, it's in, and it's interesting because if you talk to or if you ask an average person on the street um, what they know about Tantra, they'd either say, oh, the band, because there's a band called Tantra, <laughs> yeah. or they would go, oh, I've heard about those websites and those swinging groups. And uh, they immediately go to this... Uh, you know, you know the, this Japanese, this you know this vision of Japanese love nets and uh, you know um, nudist colonies and and that sort of thing. How did it get such a name? Is that was that is that a Westernization of uh, of? I uh, think it's because uh, sexual energy obviously is an extremely powerful energy within everybody. It is the primordial force of uh, procreation that exists within all of us, and it, it has to express itself. Uh, and what is understood by, has been understood by many people over the centuries, is that if you preserve this energy, um, it offers uh, huge creativity and energy that can go in other areas. And, you know, there's the old story about the boxer not, uh, you know, having sex before the big fight you know that's just one very sort of mundane example of it uh but when sexual energy is preserved it does go to other purposes in the human being and when it's preserved and cultivated in specific ways 
it can be expanded uh, to be a major contributor to our enlightenment, and it is, in fact, an essential uh, component of that. 